Hi everyone, welcome to Tracen's martial art channel. Uh, so the first thing you might notice that I come in here, right? And that's because I was uh, working on, on, the, on the ad work, so they require me to come in here. Otherwise, it would still be long. Anyway, so next thing, some of you have actually messaged me on Facebook or whatever because you guys heard that uh, there has been a riot going on in South Africa for over a week now, I think. So thank you everyone who have messaged me and are concerned about my safety. So I'm fine as you can see. Eric's fun as well. The ride is bad, but they are mostly riding in commercial areas and trying to get free loot, you know, whatever fridge, uh, refrigerators. So they haven't really ride in, in residential areas. That's why you know, people that don't own a shop are not directly affected, right? Uh, uh, I'm not fun. I'm emotionally scarred. For what? Uh, for the riots. Because you, know, you must be trying to, to, to loot a, a graphic card. Well, that too. Well, Mustang actually got looted. So the whole building and the warehouse was on fire. But no, okay, all right. I, I, I'm not, you know, I, I do care about the society. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm not, I'm very sad and I'm emotionally no, sad. No, right, I do think price will go up after this, so there is that. Well, you know, as a things, <laughs> things not going up high already. So. Yeah, so we all want to be affected in one way or another, but at least, you know, we're not directly in danger. It was the shop owners and supermarket and those places. So yeah, it's, it's pretty bad, right? People here are pretty, pretty bad, yeah. but, but at least we're safe, so thanks for all your concerns. And with that said, we're going to start with today's video, which is going to be the third episode of Style Deconstructed. Now, you might wonder where is the first and second episode, right? So here is the thing. So previously, I've done a video um, talking about applying Occam's razor to mantis, and I did a video similarly on Wuxing Tong Bay. So after some thinking, I realized that you know those kind of those videos didn't quite fit into the kung fu debunked section because not really debunking any myths or misconception. So I so I decided to make a new uh, you know section of my channel, a, a new series where I would just be talking about different styles and what's good and bad about them, right? So I decided to call this new series um, "Style Deconstructed" and. Um, those two, I wouldn't, I'm not going to change the name of the, of the uh, Mantis video and the King Tomei video, but they are kind of the first and second episode, so this will actually be the third episode, even though we don't officially have the first and second episode. And in this episode, we're going to look at the style that I was, I started my training with, which is called Shao Bei. Okay, Shao in Chinese means, uh, what well, in this case, it refers to Shaolin, right? The first character of Shaolin is called Shao, and Bei refers to the nose. So Shao Bei is basically a, a less commercial way of saying Northern Shaolin. So the reason this style is named this is because they don't want to be confused with the com over-commercialized Shaolin Temple martial arts. So that's why uh, my grandmaster uh, Zhang Rongshi, he decided to call the system Shao Bei Quan. But according to him, this style is a derivative from Northern Shaolin. However, there is some uh, debatable part of his claim and I personally don't really believe everything he said. I personally think he actually invented the style based on his own family style and some other style that he came across during his journey. But I have no proof of that. So therefore, and this isn't a fact of fiction video, so I'm not going to go into details on that. But just know that you know, according to the Grandmaster, Zhang Rongshi, this style is you know, the secret style that came out from the Shaolin Temple and was burned down. But I personally believe he invented the style based on other styles. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about this, so uh, if you, any, any of you have seen my video on myself, right, me, uh, I, and myself, I talk about that my dad primarily trained Shao Bei, and the uh, first under Grandmaster Li Fengjiu, then Grandmaster Zhang Rongshi, and so naturally when I first started martial arts, I was training under my dad, naturally, so I did Bai Yun Tong Bei, right, the white uh, ape Tong Bei, and, and, and then I also did Shao Bei, so this is actually one of my primary styles, the first, one of the first two styles, I started my martial arts with, and when I went back to China in 2003 for one and a half or well, two years of training, I then further improved on Shao Bei. That was the first the first part of my journey. I was focusing on improving Shao Bei. I visited my, my, my dad's uh, Shao Bei brothers. I went to Jinzhou, right, the origin place of this style, and I visited uh, Grandmaster Li Fengjiu and other masters in that area. And so that's basically where my knowledge of Shao Bei Qian came from. So today we're going to look at how efficient or inefficient Shao Bei is and my personal opinion on this style. 
So to do that, we're going to first look at its fundamental handwork. So Shao Biaoqian has seven primary handwork in Chinese we call it Shou Qi Gong. Shou means hand, Qi means seven, Gong means uh, accumulation of training or, or practices. And so we're going to first look at that, and then we're going to look at the portion of the form just to see, to get a snapshot and the feeling of what this style is all about. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is Zui Tan Shou. Right? Zui Tan Shou means, Zui means drunk, Tan means to spring or to flick, Shou means hand. So what it looks like is like this, there and there. So it's a relatively simple move. Right? If you look from the side, it's here and here, here and there. So the first thing that you might notice is that it's very similar to Ba Ji. Okay, so Ba Ji has this motion where the hand goes up and it protects the hip and then slides to the side. So for example, like in the big Ba Ji, there is that move where it goes here and then there, right? And in the starting of the form, it's here, and then they start in the form. So there's actually a block that's quite prevalent in, in Ba Ji. And it's in my opinion that actually, you know, Grandmaster Zhang Rongshi probably got this from Ba Ji, because his family used to do Ba Ji before he started doing Shao Bei. That's his one possibility. All right, so let's look at this block. So what this block is meant to do is to cover this half of the sphere. So whether his punching was that hand, or was that hand, so basically anything that comes from this area, you can kind of block, cover up like this. So in this sense, this approach is better than what we've looked at with mantis. We mantis everything very specific. If he punches, I have to like, like catch the hand and then do something. But here, I can just blindly do this, and anything he threw at me, except from the bottom, like uppercut just doesn't work, but any of the straight punches, it will work just fine. So in that sense, this style does kind of work to some extent. It's almost like it's almost like a master key, like we talk about. Uh, it covers a lot of the situations without having to be specific about it, right? It's like a blanket uh, block. I just come out to a guy and do, do this, and then the moment I do this, I'm gonna try to punch him in the face, and when this one fails, I'm gonna do it that the other way. So it does work in that case. You can pretty much blindly just spend this move. And you have a pretty good chance of stopping what he's gonna do and then probably punch him back in the face. There's no specific requirement for the move, and you don't even need to see what he do. Like a counter that is do this. And then you know, and if lucky you hit him. Anything you wanna add? No. You've learned this, right? A lot longer. Yes, yeah. So that's a Zui Tan Shou. Second one I'm gonna look at is a Chang Chui Shou. Chang Chui means a long hammer hand. So what that looks like is here. So on the other side, it's like this. Right, so what this does is quite, quite similar to the first one. The first one is covering here. So this is from here. Again, you're blocking anything that can come up in this, in this whole range. And then punching through the middle. So the first one you aim for the head, the second one you probably aim for anything on the chair to work to do anything on the on the body. And the step here is like a sideways step. So that you are led away from the center, right? If the person is here, you're doing a punch this way, and then a punch that way. So you're also kind of having a passive evasion value added to your move. So if he's aiming for your middle, there's a chance that, that he will miss. And again, you will be able to do this move blindly. I don't need to be specific on what he's doing or catch him on, on, his, on the correct leg, correct side, none no, no, of that stuff like we had in Mantis. Instead, I just come up to a guy and I'm, I'm just gonna you know, just do, do this, sorry, yeah, I'm gonna just do this and then do, do that and just you know, spam this and run into him, right? That's also a big thing about Shao Bei that they like to charge into the person. They don't fight like this. When the moment they fight, they wanna launch in and then punch someone. So that's a Chang Chui Shou, the long hammer hand. And the third one, what we call Pi Shan Shou, right? The mountain chopping hand. Now this, there's a very big possibility that actually Grandma Zhang Zhang Shi took this from Tong Bei, because in Tong Bei we have the exact same name, Pi Shan. It's not the same move, but it has the same name, and it's roughly the same concept. That's why I think, that, that's one of the reasons why I think Grandma Zhang Shi kind of took different styles and then converged them into one style and called the Shao Bei. 
Anyway, so Higgs algebra looks like this. Okay, on the side, it looks like this. Well, just you know, in case you confuse, I'm not here to teach you Shelby, right? This is just a uh, an analysis of a particular style. You know, you can't really watch this and learn, but it might give you better understanding on how different styles function and why some is better than other. So Higgs algebra is actually one hand that I used to use a lot back in the days when I spot and fight with people. Right before I started doing Yi Quan and eventually Tai Chi, Wu Xing, Tong Bei. Before that, I did, I used this hand a lot because it's actually quite convenient. So what you do is, irregardless, regardless of what he's doing, you want to leave the one hand and, and go aim for his shoulder side and chop it down. Whether he's throwing a punch at you or not, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go here. And then the next one will just go to that side. Again, whether he punch or not, I don't really care. So even if he's not punching, I'm still going to come up and, and do this. And the good thing about doing this is you prevent him from the ability of doing anything. Whether he punch you or not, because you're aiming for the side of his shoulder, you're cutting off the root of anything he could have done with his hand. Okay, and and the third one, so this one, that's two. And the third one basically comes here and it goes for the neck like that. Hands in the hand is like one, two, three, arm, arm, neck. The reason why I use this a lot back in the days is because it's very foolproof. Again, you don't really need to be particular about what he's doing. The more, as long as you make sure that this is a, a great opportunity to attack, I'll just you know, be able to come to a guy and just do this. And before he knows the something, then the hand already gone to the neck. So in that regard, this is actually a pretty useful uh, technique, shall we say. Uh, using an analog fusion. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, with a few on the receiving end of this kind of move. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good pressure. I don't know, for those of you who are familiar with fighting games, so it puts a lot of pressure on the guy. And also, um, um, yeah, because of the fact that you're charging in. And also, there's not much opening either, to be honest. Mm -hmm. so. And it's quite random, right? It's not something you, you, you expect. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, normally I would expect a, a, a punch yeah. from that range, you know, because of the reach and stuff, right? Yeah. A, a, a chop like this is not really. Yeah, so if you don't actually know what's coming and, and someone does this to you, there's a very low chance of you being able to do something about it efficiently. Because it's just like, you know, it's like, like what, what the hell? Yeah. And then before you, you know what happened, you already got hit on, on the neck. So this is actually a pretty, it's a pretty good technique in its own right, basically. So the next four, I'm going to be including them on the Patreon-only video. Now that is not because they are special or secretive or, or powerful or anything. It's just for the simple fact that I have to give special benefits to my Patreon supporters. So unfortunately, I have to make exclusive video for my Patreon supporters. And if any of you are interested in this content, I do you know, urge you to join my Patreon family. And I have a lot of videos there exclusive to them, a lot of information that you probably won't find in any other internet martial art, Chinese martial art sources, right? So if you're interested in really looking at the real Chinese martial art information, then my Patreon channel is a very good source. And of course, you will be supporting my endeavor, which is basically to spread the correct information and to fight against misinformation in traditional Chinese martial arts. So if you're interested in that and you're capable, then please do support me on Patreon. But today, we're going to look at a portion of the Shaobei form just to see if it's you know, correlated with its basic seven fundamental handwork. Um, so Shaobei has many, many forms, right? which is one of the, the bad things about the style, is it's not very focused. It has so many different forms, you know, so many different techniques, which in my opinion, it kind of dilutes your ability to react to a situation efficiently. But I'm going to take one form of the primary form, the most important form, called Dian Gang Quan. Right? Dian Gang Quan means the steel pointer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 
，这是真正的武术，进攻型武术。You're gonna go through the form just to let you see if the form reflects the same concept from the basic hand technique. And this is kind of fair because in the Mantis video we we just basically look at the form and broke up the technique there. So that's why we're going to do the same. And one important thing about Shaobei that you might not know is that Shaobei is a style that believes that you have to do something with your hand, at the same time you always try to do something with your legs. They call it Sun Feng, right? The three. Um, the three attack or the three blade, two hand and one leg, you have to use them at the same time. A lot of other styles they either punch or they kick, but in Shaobei they want to use all three at the same time. That is one of the unique characteristics about Shaobei. So we're gonna first look at um, the first move in Dian Gang Quan. So here the form starts so like this, here, like that. So. This you should already notice is comes straight out of Zui 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 Tan Shou. Is that blocking move? But instead of uh, doing a punch, it's sideways with a kick. So basically, what that intends to be is that when he punches, you do this and then you kick him, whether in the, in the knees or, or in the folding here to make him lose, lose balance, or maybe even in the roof, depending on the situation. So that's the first move. It's there, and as you can see, it's blocking and kicking at the same time, right? They don't. They don't want to do one and two, they want to have to at the same time. The moment something comes, you want to do, do, do this. And obviously, one problem here uh, is that we are in, in punching range, we probably are not in kicking range. But um, if you just slightly slip back, then you, it might work. So, I'm in punching range, he punches me, and I'm going to do that and then kick him. So, that could work, right? So, there's a little bit of problem in the distance, but it can work. So, so that's the first move. The second one is here. So this is like a generic block. What it does is, if you punch with that hand, it, it, it blocks here. And if you punch with that hand, it still blocks here. And this one calls for that hand. So you can pretty much spam this into someone's face and, and kind of covers everything. And the leg here is also a block for any potential kick. So if you were to kick me, it would be a, either kicking him or using the leg to, to do that. So that's this. So it's basically a, a up and lower level block at the same, the same time. So kick there, and then this is a bit confusing. It's here, here, there, and there. Right. So what this does is, again, it's not specific on what you do with it, but all these hands are just there to confuse him and to take up space and to move his hand away. So from here, the first hand is there to, to take any de 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 defense down, right? So it's here, and this also try to take any defense down and to kick him. And then when that doesn't work, then move back. And then comes back up and, and punch. So you basically try to first get some get his hand down, and when that doesn't work, you try to get his hand up, and then you punch him. So it's not, so not specific like in Mantis, right? Where everything is specific, I'm gonna block here, and then catch there, and then grab that, and then do something. Over here, it's just approximate. I'm just gonna, from here, do stuff to his face, and hopefully these things are gonna, gonna knock his hand out of the way, and they're gonna punch, punch me in the end. So that's what I like about this style. What this style, in my opinion, works better than Mantis, because it doesn't have to be specific. You just spend random moves that covers a lot of proximity of what he might be doing. Of course, in this case, all these moves are not going to cover a hook. So there are weaknesses to it. It's not completely fail-proof. But, um, you know, under the pressure, there's a chance that he might not have time to hook. So that's probably what the style is betting on. So I'm not saying this is a, a perfect solution, but it does work in a lot of the situations. Okay, so from here, there, and obviously the kick are there just to annoy him and you know possibly hurt him if you can catch on, on a good kick. So the whole idea of using punch and kick at the same time is so that it reduces his ability to react properly. So he either deals with the hand or he can deal with the kick, and either one of them is gonna, gonna get him. The problem to this though is that because you're kicking and punching at the same time, you gotta lose a lot of power on both. You can't really focus on the one. It's just like you know, if I want to do, do a leg kick, right? If I focus on doing the leg kick, I kick really, really hard. 
you want to focus on, on the knockout hook, and hook really, really hard. But you can't do a hook and a kick, and both have, have, have power. This is not how a human body works. So that's the, unfortunately the downside to Shaobei, is that when you're doing kicking and punching at the same time, you're losing out power on both, and therefore you lack the, the ability to do serious injuries and serious knockout with one or two moves. All right, so here, it's, and, and those are just to, picking up the leg is just to make you more mobile, right? So if I'm here and uh, I do this, it's harder for me to retreat or to do anything else. But if I'm lunging forward and hold this leg here, then I can either kick, stay forward, or retreat back. So that's when you show it to you. You hold up the leg when you're lunging forward. Instead of lunging here, you're lunging like that. And that shows me the right next move, right? So far from here, the next move, I step back, block, kick, and punch. So, so that was basically, I chase him, I punch, and I missed, and if he's coming back, I'm gonna, step, I'm gonna basically run back, and this covers, uh, covers well, mostly for, for kicks. Right? If it comes a kick, and I kick him back, either on that leg, or, or the lower leg, if I can catch it. So that's what this is for. So punch, there, and then when I kick, this one again blocks the, the head for any potential punches. But you know, most likely wouldn't, but you cover your bases. And then you come back with, with a punch, and again you hold up the leg for extra mobility. So that's the retrieving part. So from here, after this, then you, you retreat it again, and you do this, and then here, and that. So what this is for again is that after a failed attack, if he, he, if he moves move back and attack move this, the next one is basically a defense again. So this covers everything and comes from the handle. It's like a boxing cap parry. So this covers everything from the bottom, whether it is a, a, a kick or, or a punch. Right? So it looks like so this one covers everything here, this one covers everything there. And the leg, you do that block for the kick as well. So this again is another full on multi leveled the defense. So once the, 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 this fails, I'm gonna do a feedback and, and do that. So again, as you can see, there's no specific. I'm not trying to catch a particular hand, a particular arm, a particular wrist, or a particular leg. I'm just covering all the areas and then shrinking any of the possible attack surface that he can have on me. I'm basically exposed and then covered up. And once I cover it up and assume that he did a kick, then I stay to the side and kick him that way. So that's how this next move works. So, it's, so that was here, and then there. And from here is there, kick, and then punch again. So it's here, like that. And again, this is a non-specific technique. So basically all I do is I come up to a guy, and then take up space, like, like, like that. So if he were to punch, I'm gonna knock it out of the way. If he were to punch with the other hand, then knock it away. If his hand is just on guard, so I'm gonna knock out of the way. And when I do, I'm gonna kick him. And when he thought he got kicked, and then I'm gonna have punch him. So you can see how this entire style is based off just doing stuff to the guy, right up his face, so that you have an opportunity, opportunity to attack. You don't really care what hand is doing what or how you're gonna do anything with each hand. You just kinda of go to a guy and you do this. And because you, in, in a way, kinda of covers all the space, so that no matter what he does or you do, you're gonna hit on something, and then from there, you're gonna punch him. In Chinese, we call this a uh, wulai, right? Well, what was wulai in English? No shame. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, yes. No, no shame is one way of, of translating it. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you don't really play by the rules. You just yes, like, yeah. you just like, you know, throwing a tangent, almost. You just like doing, doing random stuff to the guy. All right. So after that, you turn around, hand kick, hand back kick, and then here, here, there there, and the punch, and the punch. So this is um, quite simple. So after you've done your, you lost 
launch attack there, you're gonna come back, and this again covers everything on the surface. So, and ideally, you wanna catch this hand, but even if you catch the other one, it's not the end of it, I mean, you might have a problem with that, but you kind of make up for it by kicking, right? So, you, you basically you turn around, you don't really know what's happening, there's no time to, to look at exactly what's happening, so I'm gonna just turn around and just do this and kick him, and hopefully it, it works. And then when I either kick him or I don't, and he steps back, then the, this one hit him on the solar plexus, and kind of you, you duck so that any potential hit to the head would kind of miss. Right, so it's here, there, and then from here, the moment he gets pushed back, then this kick comes from there. And notice that this kick is not like the Bruce Lee kick or the Taekwondo kick, where it's kind of spin around, right? I'm not trying to spin around with the kick because in this style you want to be more concealed. So if you look, when I'm here, the kick literally just kicks up and kicks up that way. There's a very little pre-action for him to see. It's here and then there. And after that, most of the stars after the kick, they kind of uh, spin back. And that's like a moment of uh, vulnerability, so to speak. If someone can evade the kick and come back at you, as you turn around, it's a weak point. So in this short base style, after you've done this kick, you don't just come back up, you immediately launch another attack from here. Again, covering any possibility he could have on the other hand. I don't even need to look. I'm just going to kick him and then do this and do that. And if he did anything while I'm back turned, it's going to knock him out of the way. And with that, I'm going to follow up with another kick. And this kick also goes with a, a wrist break. It's not really important, but it's what this move is designed for. So if somebody grab your wrist, I don't know why I will grab your wrist in this case, but, um, but it's basically here, and then kick, right? Do that, and then another kick, and the hand that basically blocks stuff. And then as you grab it down, it's a punch here, and when you block that punch, it's a punch from the middle. So that way it's here. So this one goes on top, and this one sticks to the bottom. So that's like the first half of this form. That's where we're going to stop. Because again, we're not trying to teach you, or uh, just to get you an idea of what Shabbat Yuan is about. And from this, you can see that Shabbat Yuan functions on a very broad stroke. It's not specific like Mantis, which you are, in my opinion, the star I would say is better than Mantis uh, on average when it comes to uh, combat ability. And these techniques, it's easier to be applied. Right, well, what do you think? Compared to Mantis? Yeah, it's, um, it's a lot more foolproof. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's basically what it was. And it's a lot more aggressive too. Yeah. You're not trying to, to be reactive. You just kind of yes, yeah. go to a guy and stop whacking him. Yeah. And force him to play your game instead of you trying to play his game and then try to catch him off guard. So now you might wonder then why did I eventually abandon Shao Bei Quan and you know, stop doing Yi Quan and eventually Tai Chi and Wu Xing Tong Bei. So here's the thing, I fought a long time, you know, from my, when I started training martial arts, that's like 94, to when I go back to China for two years, 2003. Through that period, I used to think Shao Bei Quan is the bomb. It's like one of the best style. And that's what my dad told me. You know, in, he, in his day, in his experience, Shao Bei Quan was the best style when it comes to combat ability. Right, the people that he met, Shao was the best. So I used to think like that until I went back to, to Beijing. And those who, who watched my videos on that, you know that I met my Yiquan teacher, Li Quanzhan Lao And I suffered a pretty bad loss against him. And that's when I realized that something that Shao has been missing. I mean, if you have been following my channel, you should already be able to guess what it is. You know what it is, right? Well, how? Exactly. A missing understanding of structural power. So in Shao Chuan, they talk about power, like everybody talk about power, but a lot, most of the people who talk about power in Chinese martial arts don't have a solution on exactly how to get power. So Shao Bei like any other external style, they say that power, you just have to do strings exercise, like cast stretch, right? Mogul, it's almost like push-up, but you, you do, it's like a yoga thing, right? Like the yoga dog stance, so you do this on the ground, of course, and go back. So they think that you, know, you just do these muscle trainings, and that will give you stronger muscles, and then what Shao Bei does is um, they hit trees, right? They have like a tree trunk, and they will hit to, to train power and conditioning the arms. 
and they all train on each other too, like, like here, there, there. So stuff like that, and, and then they will tell you, you got this hit punch, and then just do this 100 times, 1000 times a day, and that's how you train power. And a lot of people, they accept that, I do too at the time. But what happened when I make my Yijuan model is to realize that they are much more detailed to how to generate power. In Yijuan, a single punch, the exact position your body has to be, what your chest must do, what your back must do, what your hip must do, what your feet must do, how everything connects together into a punch. And evidentially, my Yijuan teacher was able to hit a lot harder than any Shaobei people I've ever met in my life. Okay? So, I mean, don't give me wrong, Shaobei guys, they do hit hard, but they hit hard based on, on pure muscular strength and, and body size. Okay? Whereas my Yijuan teacher, he was lighter and smaller and shorter than me, but he was able to generate scary amount of power. As I've told you in the video, when I got hit over here, I heard a metal noise in my ear and my mind was, was shocked for like almost a minute. Well, I actually, I don't know exactly how long, but I kind of lost count of time. And that kind of shock into my system, I've never experienced in shockwave. So when I was visiting my, my shockwave grandmaster, like Li Feng Qiu, right? Um, I mean, when he slapped me on my arm, it's pretty sore, right? And the pen kind of goes, it seeps, seeps in. It is uncomfortable. And obviously, when he punched me, it hurts. But it's just not the same type of destructive force that internal style can do. And over there, you're pretty much just hoping you improve on power. There's no clear method and tell you, 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 you know, your hip is wrong, or your head is wrong, what you're doing wrong in your body mechanic and how to improve it. They don't have anything like that. They just say, hit trees, condition yourself, and naturally power will, 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 will come. And while that's true to some extent, you, can very, you very soon will reach a cap and you won't be able to progress much beyond that. Everyone, they have, you know, from not having muscular strength to having muscular strength, and then that, that's it. Obviously, in Western uh, sport, like, like in MMA and stuff, they have more scientific training, you know, like, like, like the, the kettlebells and all of that stuff, so they are able to advance further. But in traditional Chinese external martial arts, they don't really have that much scientific understanding on muscles and muscle group and all of that, so the progression of power is quite limiting. You will hit a, a cap, a ceiling, very, very soon. And let's take this, the Pichai Shou, right? This. Well, the technique is pretty good. But what I was doing Shou Baiquan back in the days, I could never achieve the same type of P power like I'm doing now in Wu Xing Tong Bei. It is not possible. And of everyone that I've met in Shou Bei system, none, none of them could do it. There was one of my, Kong, of my Shou Bei uncle, he vaguely resembles the Tong Bei power. He's so big, he's like over 100 kilos. His arm is thick and fat. So when he hits you, it does feel a shock. But it doesn't translate to a person like me, especially back in the day, I was like, like, like 67 or, six, or 270, I was pretty skinny. So whatever he does, I can't do. And he can't teach me how to do what he does because I don't have the same body mass. And that's what I didn't like about Shao Wei eventually to realize that it's limited to how big you are. And you know, there's no method to, to get better and reach what your master is, or your, your teacher is capable of doing. Well, that's something that, you know, Wu Xing Tong Bei eventually made me understand is that, you know, I can actually generate a lot of power from this P without having a huge drop. So that's the big thing I have against Shao Bei and many of the other external styles. Is that, you know, if I met somebody like I did with my, my Yichuan teacher, he had like strong structure. When I attempt to, to do this, his arm doesn't go. Right? I just be like, Flip, and then it bounces off. And then he, he, and he will come in, crush my structure, and, and send me flying or punch me. And so that's why it doesn't really work so well. So while Shao Bei, in my opinion, is better than Mantis and many of the other styles that talks about specific counter to specific solution. Shao Bei is beyond that. It, it's not restricted to that. It's using broad strokes that covers areas. So that is good. But when you meet somebody who has strong structure, who are simply bigger than you, um, then you have a problem. Whereas compared to... You know, what I'm doing now is Wuxing Tong Bei, even if he has structure, if I just, you know, do that, I'll break his structure, right? Yeah. And, you know, I couldn't do that before I started Wuxing Tong Bei. And way back when you did Shao Bei, you also realized this. Actually, I didn't, didn't think about this. Didn't think about it, yeah. You didn't but, meet um, anyone doing, doing each one, I guess. Sorry? You didn't meet anybody doing each one. Yeah, no, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but um, the one thing that bothers me, Yes, that um, a, a, a gym boot can, you know, outpower. Yes. That, especially the way shopping, fine. Yes, it's yes, forceful. Yeah. There's no trickery or, or, or scam. 
You just go to a guy and you whack him hard. And hopefully you, you whack harder. Yeah. So 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 that that's the one thing that bothers me is that they didn't actually mention there's no descriptive on on, on, on power, basically. Yes. You can outsmart a guy by using cunning moves and well thought of moves. But that's as far as it goes. Uh, and you know, I, I guess the charging part is a bit bothering me as well. Yeah, if you have to be bigger I, than you, you're gonna bounce back. I, I don't have balance. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's, it's it's the same fault with you know some of the martial arts out there where yes. you you're relying on one leg yes. um, to 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 do everything. Basically, yeah. Yeah. it's okay if you find somebody lighter. Yeah. But if I'm like hundred kilo and he's like you know how much you weigh seventy. Yeah, something like that. You charge me, you're gonna bounce off. Yeah. You know, it's not gonna. Actually, that's one thing that that actually that's what I thought of. Um, it's um, okay. So uh, it's basically, um, uh, it's it's just a long time ago now. Um, and Discovery Channel has one uh, 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 a series um, that's actually described or break break down martial arts. You know, modern martial arts. Okay. So I forgot the name of it. And um, and basically they uh, they they trying to do the whole lab environment. So they have a crash dummy with bullet ballistic gel to mimic a body and he they they invite a bunch of martial artists oh, to yeah. um to to test uh, to measure power basically with like you know a proper newton of force yeah. and etc etc and um one thing that bothers me the most right is that they have got a a, a chinese uh, martial artist i forgot his lineage well, he's not even, he's, he was like american chinese he wasn't even real chinese bro. <laughs> No, it's not me to, to, yeah, to we question. We're not racist, but just saying, you know, if you want to do a documentary on Chinese martial arts, you should probably hire someone from China, not some American-born Chinese. So yeah, so so this guy is uh, uh, is fairly light actually. Yeah. He, he can jump very high. Yeah. Um, he, was he was a contemporary champion in America. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. it was a really bad selection. So yeah, so so um, as it turns out, they asked the guys, all the martial artists, to do a kick, yeah. basically. And obviously, all of them did a running kick because mm. it gives more momentum. Yeah. So you know your reading will, will go higher. And this Chinese guy, right? Out of all the moves he, he did, he did a drop kick. So he was running, and he was oh. like you know jump up two legs yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so two leg kick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a two leg kick. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, the the American African uh, karate champion. Yeah, oh, he like, like, does spinning, yeah, yeah, spinning side kick. spinning side kick, and yeah. obviously that packs a lot more punches. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Besides the fact that he's more massive, but yeah. So in the Muay Thai, did the knee, which is like, it's like what the hell? Uh, I didn't watch the Muay Thai. Like, I only watched the Chinese. It's not even apple to apple. <laughs> and he oh. did this knee. Oh yes, yeah. So that's not even the same comparison. Those, those, those guys, they weren't really scientific. This is not. You can't measure this with a kick because you you are restricting the dummy's ability to. Yeah, you're holding it back. Exactly. So it's like putting a dummy against the wall and then you can Yeah, so it was one of the scientific. Yeah. So, so that, that one thing got me thinking is that Shaolin or, or the, the South, uh, the Northern Shaolin yeah, South, Shaolin. Right? Shaolin. Yeah. Um, they rely on charging as well. Yes. But what happened if, uh, look, I'm not that much heavier than the, the, than the Chinese guy, to mm. be honest. It's similar size, similar height, similar weight. Typical so, Asian weight. Yeah, uh, Southern Asian. Um, so, yeah, so. If he couldn't do much when he's charging, right? Because he's light. Yeah. So that got me thinking. You know, if I'm using you know uh, Xiaomi, you know, Sao, and I'm charging as well, will yeah, I not? A rugby player. Yeah, will yeah. I not? Uh, even against a dummy, right? Against anything, yeah. will I not get moved back? Yeah. So uh, so that rugby. so that that's the turning point of me with Xiaomi yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that's why if you look at my later development in my video, well, in my personal journey, Yi Quan, Tai Jing, Ping Tong Bei, it all starts where you are grounded. You don't jump around and doing yeah. punch and kick at the same time. You put your foot down and you use body mechanic to generate power or, you know, or whatever type of uh, punches you are you're doing. So yeah, so I eventually also became a believer that you have to have both feet grounded to generate the best power and to be able to to embrace the most impact, right? So sometimes when two people fight, especially, you know, like in the street, they will like run into you. And you, you, you must be able to absorb that impact and not get pushed off balance. Because if you do, your punches are not going to matter. So I would say, Shao Bei is great if you just want to spend three months to a year to train and then beat up people who are trying to piss you off or self-defense. And it's like, a, it's like a fairly good noob killer, right? 
If you do shop and you walk on the street, you find some dumb man who trying to pick a fight with you, you're probably gonna win. He's gonna like come up to you like this, and you're gonna go like, and then you knock him on, 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 the, on the leg, and then you know, it'll be that. So it's a good noob killer, but if you wanna be serious about Chinese martial art and deal with people who are bad, who are highly skilled, a shop jump will not get you very far. Well, you know, uh, look, I mean, you know, I, if I were to get into a fight with a, a skillful shopping uh, user or pra a, a practitioner, the chances of me beating him is not guaranteed. You know, uh, against a good guy, you know, I, I, I will lose, you know, even if I practice, you know, Tongbei and, and Ephus. Um, but yeah, but the, uh, the, uh, the bottom line is that, um, you know, you just tank the shot and hit him really, really hard. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, but but yeah, you know, the bottom line for me at least, the bottom line is that you know, um, what happened if I fight a guy that is bigger than me, yeah. which is most of the case because I'm not a very big guy. Um, <laughs> it doesn't more. Well, you know, that just get me fat, not big. Um, but yeah, but that's just not only on a specific, uh, you know, style. I can be against a boxer, right? Yeah. Those guys are big. I can hit against yeah. heavyweight. I can yeah. be up against a grappler, like yeah. a or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're big too. So you know, so you know, me charging into them, right, with that kind of weight is yeah. suicide, basically. Yeah. They could just grab me, you know, they can just take my knock, you know, just yeah. beef it up, or they can just, you know, do a do an all round boxing block. Yeah. And I'm history. Yeah. And that's when I say, you know, okay, wait a minute. I, I, you know, this style it, 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 I need to figure it out, you know. Is there any other, you know, better way of approaching? It? So that that's when you know that's yeah. that's for me. Uh, and you know, if I would now that to ever meet a shop guy and then we have to duel or to spar, my approach would be I know they want to charge, so what I will yeah. do is I will basically take half a step back and try to catch him on his front arm, whatever he's doing, chop, punch, whatever, and then. So that way he's doing, this is just a, a general approximation, right? Uh, he's gonna do that, he's gonna do this, and then you know, I'm gonna do my whole uh, circular hand and combo again. You see, they go back to this, that feels video, right? I can apply the same combo. I, I, I don't want him to charge right into my face, of course. So as he charges, I'll just come back, and uh, from here, I'll hopefully catch him. And if not, then I'll catch that one. But as long as I catch one of his arms, I'll break his balance. Especially because he's charging, and he's, not, and he's not rooted, he's doing this. So I'm gonna break his balance, and once that happens, I'm gonna hit him really hard, and then finish the fight. So that's my approach. I'm not saying it's 100% gonna work, but that's how the way I understand the strength and weakness of Shaobei versus what I'm doing now. And I'm explaining this so you can see the difference between these styles and why I eventually settled with Tai Chi and Wu Xing Tongbei. Anything you wanna add? Balancing is, is a big problem. Yes, yeah. yes, balancing is a problem. Balance is a problem. Yeah. yeah. So and they basically try to cover this, make up for this by charging in. Yes. You know, if you're charging and the guy's retreating, then he won't strip, strip your balance. But what if he isn't retreating, but he's just doing a tactical retreat so that he can do something to break your balance? In that case, like what my each one teacher did to me uh, back in 2003 when I first met him. And that becomes a big problem. Because I can't break his structure, and once I, I collide with him, I'm going to get knocked out. So yeah, anything else? That's it. Alright, so this will be well, the first, but actually the third episode of uh, Style Deconstruction. And those of you who might not know, Deconstruction is a postmodern philosophy event, uh, founded by Derrida. Right? So if you're interested, you can go Google Derrida Deconstruction, and uh, it's actually a pretty interesting uh, school of postmodern philosophy where they talk about how you can take anything, and as you, as you take things apart, you actually see meanings in this thing that you don't see if you look at something as a complete, built, finished product. Uh, maybe in the future, if you have interest, I'll talk more about deconstruction. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please subscribe on my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon so that you can get updates, notifications, so as I upload my new video, so that you never miss a video. And if you can send me a Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. As I said in the middle of the video already, uh, it will help me out greatly and also it will give me the motivation to continue producing quality and informative content and trying my best to combat against misinformation in the traditional Chinese martial art community. And as always, a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting me throughout this pandemic. And whenever you have anything you need, feel, always feel free to contact me and message me. Question on current content, suggestion for future content, 
always feel free to contact me and I'll definitely get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks for watching Tracy's martial arts channel. Remember we're in the pandemic, so keep your mask on, keep your social distance. This isn't over yet, then get vaccinated if you can, right? And stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.